Hello and welcome to tutorial 10 on Core 3 Trigonometry as it appears in the LXL Core 3 Maths A level course. As always, we're going to start by taking a look at what LXL says we need to know. Well, we're in section 2 on trigonometry and there are various things we need to know and they're listed below. In this particular tutorial, we're going to talk about second, cosecant and cotangent. We're going to talk about their relationship to the sine, cosine and tangent and we're going to understand a bit about their graphs and their appropriate domains. As always with trigonometry work in maths A level, angles can be measured in both degrees and radians, so just look out for what the particular question is asking you. We won't do arc, sine, arc, cos and arc, tan yet, or any of the rest. Right, let's start off. The first thing we're going to define are what are called three new reciprocal trigonometric functions, and they're going to be called second cosecant and cotangent and for short sec, cosec and cot or we're going to call them for short. Now we're going to define them as follows. The first one we're going to say that second of an angle or for short sec theta is going to be def defined to be 1 over cos theta. It's the reciprocal of cos theta, 1 over cos theta. We're going to define the cosecant function or cosec of theta to be 1 over sine theta and as you can guess we're going to define the cotangent uh, function or the or cot of theta to be 1 over tan theta. Now because we know from core 2 that tan theta is actually sine over cos this is 1 over or 1 divided by sine over cos which flips the fraction and so we can think of cot theta as also cos theta over sine theta. Now these are three new functions, they're the reciprocal trig functions because they're one over the three functions we've previously defined. Um, whenever we define a function we had better state what uh, values it's valued for. I'm going to talk about this in much more detail when I draw these graphs here. But this function is fine unless cos theta is zero. So cos theta cannot be zero because thou shalt not divide by zero. Okay, so this function is defined as long as cos theta is not equal to zero, and I'll and I'll say later when we're drawing the graphs what that means for theta. Here, similarly, this is defined as long as sine theta is not equal to zero, and cot theta is similarly defined. It's fine as long as sine theta is not equal to zero. Okay, so these are the three new functions. A little tip for you here: the third letter of each function, sec tells you that that's 1 over cos, the c's. The third letter here, cosec, the s tells you that it's 1 over sine, the s is the same. And the third letter here, cot, tells you that it's 1 over tan theta. And there's a little way we can remember which one's which. Sec, the c, tells us it's 1 over cos. Cosec, the s, tells us it's 1 over sine. And cot, the t, tells us it's 1 over tan. A little tip there for us. Okay, next, we're just going to evaluate um, these functions at particular um, values for degrees and radians. So you need your calculator for this. And using your calculator, we're asked to do the following. Work out sec 280 degrees. Work out cot 115 degrees. And work out cosec 9 pi over 10 radians. Remember, the C there is a sign for radians, as opposed to the usual degrees sign. Now, if you look on your calculator, there is no, on most calculators, sec, cot, or cosec. So what we have to do is we have to simply just remember their definitions. Sec 280 must be defined to be 1 over cos 280. So all we have to do in our calculator is simply do 1 divided by cos 280, where our calculator is in degrees mode, and to three significant figures we should get 5.76. Let's do the same here, cot 115 degrees, well that's just 1 over tan of 115 degrees. And we type in our calculator 1 divided by tan of 115 in degrees mode, and we should get the answer at minus 0 0.466 to three significant figures. Lastly, cosec 9 pi over 10 radians. Now, we have to remember to switch our calculator to radians mode, 
So find the radiance mode on your calculator, and this would be defined as 1 over sine 9 pi over 10. So in your calculator, type 1 divided by sine 9 pi over 10. And with a bit of luck and your calculator in radians mode, we would get the answer 3.24 to 3 significant figures. So that's how we work uh, sec, cot and cosec out on our calculator. We just remember the definitions of them as 1 over the normal trig functions. Type that into our calculator and remember to be in the appropriate degrees or radians mode as appropriate. Okay, I have a few for you to try yourself. Pause the video, check you can work the following out on your calculator. In 10 seconds, I'll show you the answers. Off you go. Okay, um, I'm just going to pop the answers up for these. I don't intend on going through them. Here are the answers. Maybe I just pick one, for example, just to show you how I got it. Um, cot 4 pi over 3. Well, by definition, this would be 1 over tan 4 pi over 3. Given that we're in 4 pi over 3, we're clearly in radians mode. So make sure your calculator is in radians mode and type 1 divided by tan of 4 pi over 3 and with a bit of luck you get 0 0.577 as I got up here and hopefully you could find the answers to all of these fairly easily. Okay let's move on now a similar exercise this time we're going to evaluate second cosecant and cotangent in exact form what we're going to do is we're going to use the knowledge of some of the angles of sine, cos and tan we know between 0 and 90 to work out in exact form some values for sec, cosec and cot. So here's a typical example. Without using your calculator, evaluate the following, leaving your answer in exact or third form. Sec 210 degrees. Now, first thing to do here is to actually translate this back to what it means in terms of cos. It's 1 over cos 210. Now if we could work out cos 210 then we could work out its reciprocal. Now can we work out cos 210? Well we can. Let's draw ourselves a little graph here. We always draw a graph when we're trying to work out or solve trigonometric equations. Now cos looks something like this. Okay this point here is 90, this point here is 180, this point here is 270, and this point here is 360. That's your cos graph. This is cos theta. That would be in theta. Okay, now 210, where does 210 lie? Well, 210 lies somewhere here. Okay, 210 lies somewhere here, and it's 30 degrees from a peak, 30 degrees moved from a peak and it's got a negative value. Now we only know the values of cos between 0 and 90. Now this is 30 away from a peak so what we could do by symmetry if we went 30 away from this peak here to 30 degrees here, if we knew the value of this it would be almost the same as this apart from this is positive and this would be a negative value. Okay, so we can say that, um, for example, let's just move to cos 210 first of all. Cos 210, this is a bit of side working, is the negative, is this value here, but negative of it. So it's the negative of cos 30 by symmetry. And we know that cos 30 is root 3 over 2, so this is negative root 3 over 2. So therefore we could work out, we could go back up here and we could work out what? Uh, sec 210 is. So that was side working. So therefore, this must equal 1 divided by the negative root 3 over 2, which is negative 2 over root 3. 
And if we rationalize times top and bottom by root 3, if we wanted to, this would be negative 2 root 3 over 3. And we could then test that out in our calculator and do 1 divided by cos 210. So if we did 1 divided by cos 210 in our calculator, we do actually get negative 2 root 3 over 3. Okay? Let's have a go at another one. How would we work out cot 225? Well, first of all, translate that into 1 over tan 225 degrees. And let's do a bit of working with tan, the tan graph, just to see if we can work out what tan 225 must be. Well, we know tan looks something like this. That point there, 90. That point there, 180. 270 and tan comes up here to 360. Now 225, where exactly is 225? Well 225 is somewhere here. That would be 225 there. And 225 is 45 degrees from uh, a root, 45 degrees. So it must have the same value as 45 degrees from here. So this must equal 1 over tan of 45 degrees. Now we know tan 45 is 1, so 1 over, this must be 1 over 1, which is simply 1. And just to check in our calculator, if we were trying to work at cot 225 and we did 1 divided by tan 225 in degrees mode, we would indeed get 1. And this I've got one more. Um, cosec 3 pi over 4 and we're in radians here. Remember this is the sign for radians. Well, what does this mean? It means 1 over sine of 3 pi by 4. Like so. Now could we work this out? Um, yeah, let's draw ourselves a sine graph. We should know by now that the sine graph is looking something like this. This point here is pi by 2, this is pi, this is 3 pi by 2, and this is 2 pi. Now where is 3 pi by 4? Well it's just less than pi, 3 quarters pi, it must be here somewhere. This point here must be 3 pi by 4. Okay, and 3 pi by 4 is pi by 4 forward from pi by 2. Okay, it's pi by 4 that way. So by symmetry, it must have the same value as pi by 4 back, okay, from pi by 2, which would be pi by 4. Okay, so this must be equal to 1 over sine of pi by 4. Well, sine of pi by 4, we should know, is uh, root 2 over 2. So 1 over sine pi by 4 is 2 over root 2. And if we rationalized it, it would simply be root 2. So again, checking, if we typed in our calculator 1 divided by sine 3 pi by 4, and our calculator is in radians mode, with a bit of luck, we get root 2. And indeed, we do. OK, so that's how you worked out exact values of second cosine tangent and cotangent. Here are a few for you to try yourself. Pause the video, have a go, then I'll go show you the answers. Okay, the answers are as follows for these. I'm not going to go through them. They're exactly like the, th uh, the examples I did before. Drawing the graph, relating it to trigonometric values you know, and here were the answers for each of them. So do check off your work and double check you can get each of those answers. That's all I'm going to talk about now in this video. Um, just how to evaluate cosec, cosecant, uh, sec and cotangent on your calculator and ex in exact form. And just to cover over what we've done, if you read through chapter six, page 83 to 85, and look at the examples in the book, 
and then do exercise 6a on page 86 all that will cover everything I've just talked about in this video. Then tune in to my next video where I talk about the graphs of sec theta, cosec theta and cot theta. Thanks for watching.